Hello, I'm the CNC repairman, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to inspect a used CNC lathe before purchase. I'm gonna be using an inspection checklist that doesn't go over everything in detail, but it goes over each item you may wanna look at. To start with, it says to go over the things on the front of the machine, the pendant and just the sheet metal. So if we look at the sheet metal, you're gonna to wanna to look, does it look like a part has been thrown through the door? Is the sheet metal in good condition? Are the door rollers okay? Does the door open and close? That door feels okay. The other thing you wanna look at are the door wipers and how many chips are packed inside all the way around and down here. Sometimes that could cause the coolant to leak. The other thing that you wanna look at are the lights. This machine doesn't have any lights inside, but that's sometimes a nice option that you would want to add. The next thing you look at is the pendant. The things on the pendant that you're gonna to want to inspect are the keyboard, the screen, the lights, the alarm light, and the different buttons. The main buttons that wear out are the reset button, the forward button, clockwise, and sometimes the T or the M or the G. So in our case, the reset button works, the e-stop comes out, all of these look like they're in good condition, none of them look extremely worn out. We'll start by looking at the spindle and seeing what options the machine has. So looking at this machine, I can see that it has a tailstock, it has a turret, but it does not have a tool setter or a parts catcher, a C-axis, or live tooling. If your machine has those, you're gonna wanna make note what type of options it has. So if it has a C-axis, you're gonna wanna look at the M code and engage the C-axis and disengage it check it jogging as well as the brake. The tool setter, if your machine has a tool setter, you're gonna to wanna to either pull it down or manually or automatically activate it and check in X and in Z, both sides, does the tool setter beep and does it set a correct offset. A parts catcher, you're gonna to wanna to run the MDI code for the parts catcher and make sure it swings up and it engages with the door and it hasn't been crashed into. The other option you'll wanna look at is live tooling. Is there live tooling on the turret? and what type of drive? Is it an internal BMT and an external? Is it a gear drive or is it a belt drive? Those are all be useful when you're purchasing tooling. None of this machine has those options, but those are all things you're gonna to wanna to check that'll affect you know, the purchase price of your machine and if they're working. The other thing that is an option is a tailstock. And in our case, this machine does have a tailstock and I can tell by the age of the machine, but you may wanna pull the weight covers back. There's a different, few different types of tailstocks. There could be a DC servo that is run by a ball screw or a lead screw. Could be a hydraulic or a ball screw servo motor. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you can jog the tail stock and that the weight covers don't bind. Inside the machine, the most important area, your spindle and your turret, your X and your Z. You're gonna to wanna to know what size spindle do I have? This is gonna be a factor whether you have a small lathe or a large lathe. And you could have an A25, six, eight, or 11, and you could have a big bore or a small bore. So you're gonna to wanna to make note what type of spindle you have, and if the chuck is off, you're gonna to wanna to look at the draw tube and the condition that the draw tube is in. You're gonna also wanna verify that you can clamp and unclamp the chuck, and that you don't have anything impeding the chuck going back and forth, and what type of chuck? Is it a three jaw, a four jaw, or a collet chuck? You wanna be sure that all those things go with the machine. The other thing that you wanna check is when you run it at high RPMs, does the spindle shake? Is the chuck actuator out of balance. Also, we're gonna look at the spindle belts in a few minutes when we walk around to the back of the machine. You're gonna to wanna to start and stop and run the spindle and counterclockwise to make sure that it doesn't squeal. So let's go ahead, make sure that the chuck is clamped and we're going to just run it at 500 RPM and see how it sounds. And we're just gonna stop it. We can run it again and increase the spindle speed and let's try it now. This spindle sounds pretty good. It doesn't sound totally worn out. Now let's inspect the turret. When you're looking at the turret, you're gonna to wanna to know what type of machine you have and what type of turret you have because that's going to indicate what type of tooling you purchase. So is your machine an SL like this, an HL, or a newer ST? So let's jog over so that we can look at our turret here. And just looking at this older style turret, this is a VDI turret. Now I'm going to double check that I can index the turret. We're verifying that all of this works and that we don't have any internal problems. So when I press ATC forward, I wanna be sure that the turret unclamps, rotates, and clamps smoothly. You don't want it to clunk and you don't want it to rotate 
while it's clamping. The other thing you wanna look at is I can see here, looks like somebody bumped into something. That's okay, it just means that the machine could be out of alignment. The other thing you're gonna wanna look at is does it look like somebody's welded tool holders into it or ground parts of it off or is there you know, an obvious crash mark where a chuck ran right into the turret? Your machine may have a chip auger or a chip conveyor, or in this case, just a pile of chips down there. Either way, you're going to wanna come over here and hit the chip forward and let it run for at least two minutes. Then you're gonna to wanna to hit chip stop and you have to hold down the reverse button to run the chip conveyor in reverse. This is to verify that the motor doesn't just run for a few seconds and then alarm out. I've seen that happen many times. A few more things that we're gonna to wanna to check. One of them is the axis system. That means we're gonna to wanna to make sure that X goes all the way up, Z comes all the way forward, and that the weight covers and the wipers are in good condition. So the first thing we can do is to jog X down and jog X all the way back up. That's gonna verify that none of the weight covers are bound up. Other thing we can do is to jog Z forward. Don't go too far forward. Then we can jog Z back. If we jog X all the way down, we can then tell it to do a rapid home by saying X, zero return, G28. That's gonna tell me, is it a go fast? Do I have an amplifier problem? Then I'm gonna do the same thing in Z by pressing Z, zero return, G28 home. That's gonna send the turret and the X, so the whole saddle assembly, home. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that everything also does home by either doing a power up restart or a zero return on everything. That'll verify that the home switches are working and that your grid shift values are set correctly. Looking at the side of the machine, you may need to remove covers depending on the age of your machine. The hydraulic system, the pump, the motor, and the chuck actuator is a good indication on if the machine has been run a lot and if anything has recently been replaced or there was any maintenance. To start with, how does the hydraulic pump sound? How does it look? Does the radiator look clogged? Does it look like everything is covered in oil and nothing has been replaced? Or does something look clean and new? When the hydraulic pump is running, see if you can adjust the chuck clamp pressure or the hydraulic pressure. Make sure that the gauges move and that the master gauge works. Look at the oil inside the hydraulic tank. If it has a sight gauge, that will tell you, but you may need to pull the cap off. Look inside there and see if it looks milky. That indicates that there's coolant inside of the oil. Also, look closely at the encoder belts. There may be an encoder and a belt on the end of the motor, but there will for sure be an encoder, belt, and pulleys on the spindle. If those are worn out, you'll have a hard time tapping. The same thing if you hear it squealing, the belts are probably loose and you're going to need to either replace the belts and the pulleys. Just a general inspection of this area will tell you if anything has been replaced or is likely going to wear out in the near future. Inspect the electrical cabinet before purchasing the machine to see what type of condition the parts are inside of it. You're going to wanna to check to see if you have a battery board, external and maybe somewhere here or up here. If that battery goes dead during transport, you're going to lose all the parameters. The power supply. This is a newer style power supply. If it looks clean, it's most likely been replaced recently. Servo amplifiers. If you have open cards for servo amplifiers, you have DC motors. If you have closed cards, you have AC motors. This gold style amplifier is the oldest amplifier. The silver is the newest style. So we can see they have a new power supply and also a new amplifier. For spindle drives, a machine may have an older style spindle drive. It may have a classic style vector drive or a new smart style vector drive. In any of those cases, you're gonna to wanna to factor that into the replacement cost of the machine if it fails down the road. This cabinet looks pretty clean overall and hopefully your machine looks like this. Lastly, when you're purchasing your machine, you wanna be sure that you have the riggers and also the truckers lined up. You wanna be sure you get a parameter backup of the machine before it gets disconnected from power and be sure that you have a backup battery in the machine. Be sure that the books come with the machine. Those are very helpful when troubleshooting and there's a printed parameter copy in them. Shipping brackets. Be sure to ship the machine by strapping the ball screws, especially in Z and inside here so that it can't go moving around while it's being trucked. Cosmoline or some type of oil sealant. Be sure to put any type of sealant over all the way covers and the chuck so that they don't rust in case it sits out in a high humidity environment. Strapping the pendant. 
wrap the pendant in saran wrap with some foam or cardboard and then push it all the way back and strap it to itself so that it can't swing out while it's on a truck. Leveling pads. Find all the leveling feet underneath once the machine is picked up and put them in a box and store them inside the machine so they don't get lost, as well as the chip chute. Don't let that get lost. It's gonna get, need to get removed in shipping. And I recommend putting that inside the machine and then closing the door and wire tying it. So that's it. Best of luck.